Colombia's registry office will ask the National Electoral Council for a general recount of the votes for the Republic Senate. The strike of transport sector took on a new dimension in its ninth day with the support of several large employers' associations in view of what they consider the lack of concrete actions to deliver the aid promised by the government. The Summit of Foreign Ministers of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, a multilateral organization that gathered 57 states of Asia, Africa and Oceania, started in Pakistan. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Luis Alberto Matos from the Telesur Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. And in view of the continuous denunciations presented by different political sectors regarding alleged irregularities in the scrutinies, the Colombian Registry Office will ask the National Electoral Council for a general recount of the votes for the Senate. The National Registrar Alexander Vega Rocha revealed that they will, he will make the request to the electoral body after recognizing that there is an important number of forms that have been incorrectly filed out. And to clarify things, it will be necessary to carry out a new general vote by, by vote count. The official announced that the jurors who have manipulated the forms will be investigated. He said the irregularities are being corrected by the scrutiny commissions and will be brought to the attention of the public prosecutor's office. According to the Secretariat, 100% of the voting tables in Colombia have already been counted and the international tables have yet to be counted, which will be processed by the Electoral National Council. Tensions rises in Colombia over mobilizations of mobile anti riot squad following an apparent takeover attempt in the Department of Norte de Santander that left at least one dead and 20 injured. The authorities decided to transfer this repressive group to support the National Army in the municipality of El Tarra due to the difficult situation caused by the intention of more than 400 families to invade a lot within the security perimeter of the military base. The commander of the 2nd Division of the National Army, Omar Esteban Sepulveda, indicated that the military forces carry out an attack operation in response to disturbances allegedly produced by citizens of El Tahra region in an attempt to take over a military base. Human rights organizations called for clarification of reports of the presence of armed men allegedly using the migrant population as a fuel for conflict. to get to the electoral truth uh, with the presence of the president of the union we have taken the decision today according to the number of inconsistencies in the e14 forms on the senate and for the peace of the country as national registrator i will request tomorrow the count of all the tables of the senate of the republic we will get to the electoral truth that is the news we have today in Chile, the National Association of Human Rights Defenders calls on the government to make a statement on the situation of victims of violence by state agents. The organization facilitated a dialogue between the people who are holding the offices of the National Human Rights Institute in order to take action in response to the demands for freedom, truth, justice, reparation and guarantees of non-repetition, which the victims of human rights violations are demanding. On the other hand, they demanded that the government, through the Subsecretariat of Human Rights, rights make a statement on the situation of the victims of state violence and their families, and that it implements measures in accordance to international standards. Brazil's former president Luis Ignacio Lula da Silva consolidated his leads over head of state Jair Bolsonaro ahead of October's presidential elections. A telephone survey conducted by the FSB Institute among 2,000 people revealed that presidential candidate Luis Ignacio Lula da Silva has 54% voting intention, while his closest contender Jair Bolsonaro managed to accumulate 35% support. According to the opinion poll, citizens consider the leader of the Workers' Party to be the candidate best prepared to face the problems that Brazil is currently experiencing. Also in Brazil, the Indigenous Missionary Council denounced to the United Nations Human Rights Council the systematic violence committed by the government of Jair Bolsonaro against native peoples. In the framework of the 49th session of the Human Rights Council, Indigenous representatives warned about the Bolsonaro government's support to minors and deforesters in the invasion of their territories. The indigenous people claim that this policy causes destruction and mercury contamination, as well as violence, disease, hunger and death. At the same time, they denounced Bolsonaro's policies that include the neglect of indigenous health care with a lack of doctors, medicines and vaccines, as well as the paralyzation of the territorial demarcation as part of their government plan.
Let us take a break now. Join us again after this. Welcome back to From the South. The transporter strike in Spain has taken on a new dimension on its ninth day, with the support of several large employers' associations in view of what they consider the lack of delivery of the government promises. The Spanish executive had agreed with the National Road Transport Committee a 500 million euro aid as from April in order to subsidize the increase in fuel prices. Several of the employers' organizations in that committee have rejected the agreement and an increasing number of companies are already reducing or stopping their activities due to the short of supplies. The crisis comes at the time when companies are also facing the rising cost of raw materials, electricity and fuels, as well as bottlenecks in global trade. On Monday, at least two people were injured in a gun attack at the Malmo Latin School in Sweden. So far, police have not disclosed the ages of those injured during the accident. The incident comes as the country's gun violence rate has risen, largely to increase gang activity. According to local police, the law enforcement continued the search the premises for more suspects as students remain in lockdown, and investigations are still on the way as they do not anticipate more injuries. The school, which has about 1,100 students, quarantined the pupils until it was clear to leave the facilities. One suspect is already in custody. Also Monday, the World Health Organization said that the world is not spending the enough to revive the fight against tuberculosis after the COVID-19 crisis set back years of progress. Ahead of World Tuberculosis Day on Thursday, the WHO said global spending on TB diagnostics, treatment and prevention in 2020 was less than half of the target of 13 billion US dollars annually by 2022. TB death increased in 2020 for the first time in more than a decade, and the situation continues to look bleak, said Teresa Casaeva, director of the WHO's Global TV program. At the most, two-thirds of eligible children under five years did not receive TB preventive treatment, and over 1.1 million under 15 years were Ill, fell ill with TB in 2020, and 226,000 children and adolescents died, the WHO reported. For World TV Day this year, our call and focus is on the future. Building on lessons learned from COVID-19 research, there is a need to catalyze investments and actions to accelerate the development of new effective tools, especially new vaccines for TB. The Russian Defense Ministry reported Tuesday that 137 military targets in Ukraine were destroyed by airstrikes on Monday. Defense spokesman Major General Igor Konashenkov said they had destroyed six command posts and communication centers, two multiple rocket launchers, one anti-aircraft missile system, eight missile depots, artillery and ammunition, as well as 101 stockpiles of war materials. The Russian Defense Ministry also reported that Russian anti-aircraft systems shot down 14 Ukrainian drones and they stress that the military strikes are not directed against civilian facilities but are aimed at disabling the Ukrainian war infrastructure. Russia announced its withdrawal from negotiations with Japan over the Kuril Islands in response to what they call Japan's hostile attitude towards Moscow. Through a communique, the Russian Foreign Ministry explained that it is withdrawing from the negotiations due to Tokyo's hostile actions by joining the West in their unilateral sanctions against Moscow, following Russia's special military operation to protect the Donbass population and to demilitarize and denazify the Ukraine. Moscow said that it will not continue the dialogue and, quote, due to the impossibility of dealing with the signing of a fundamental document on bilateral relations with a state that o openly takes a hostile position and seeks to harm the interests of Russia. The European Union foreign policy chief, Joseph Borrell, said further sanctions against Russia are unlikely. After a meeting on Monday between foreign ministers of the European Union, Borrell declared that there were no decisions on sanctions against Russian oil. He also revealed that the Union is unlikely to impose further sanctions on Russia. This week, for reasons attributed to the measures, working-class citizens in the UK, Spain and Germany are seeing a crippling rise in the cost of living, which is sparking protests. 
European Union leaders will give their recommendations on the implementation of new sanctions at the upcoming summit on March 24th. For the European Security and Defense Policy. I think that. On Monday, world leaders and water experts gather in Senegal's capital, Dakar, for the start of the world's biggest international water conference. The forum is held every three years and aims to allow decision makers to collaborate and make long-term progress on global water challenges, according to organizers, and is jointly convened by the World Water Council, addressing delegates at the opening ceremony of the ninth gathering of the World Water Forum, Senegal's president, Macky Sall, warned that rapid urbanization and industrialization were threatening supplies of safe drinking water for people around the world. The fight for access to clean water is a critical goal in developing nations, and interest is high in this year's gathering, which is held for the second time in Africa. The forum runs until March 26. Everything suggests that if nothing is done, the situation will go from bad to worse, mainly because of the strong demographic pressure of rapid urbanization and polluting industrial activity. This ninth World Water Forum gives us the opportunity to sound the alarm of the seriousness of the situation, so that the question of war stays at the heart of the international agenda. We have more news coming up after a final short break, so stay with us. Welcome back to From the South, the summit of foreign ministers of the Islamic Cooperation Organization, a multilateral body that brings together 57 states from Asia, Africa, and the Pacific, is starting in Pakistan. A special Chinese delegation headed by Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Ji is taking part in the meeting. The 48th session of the Council opened on Tuesday in Islamabad, chaired by Pakistani Foreign Minister Shah Mahmoud Qureshi. The meeting will be discussed the way forward to promote unity as well as economic and trade relations, the situation in Palestine and developments in the conflicts in Yemen, Libya, Sudan, Somalia, Syria and other regions. The summit agenda also includes numerous African issues such as the situation in Mali, the Sahel region and Lake Chad, Central Africa and the Republic of Guinea. Search and rescue efforts progress in China following plane crash in southern China. The fire department found pieces of the Boeing 737 flight. Rescuers continue to work in the disaster area. However, rescue groups have not reported any survivors yet. So far, more than 500 firefighters and 97 vehicles have been deployed to assist in the rescue operations. In this regard, the president of China, Xi Jinping, ordered to take prompt measures to identify the causes of the accident and strengthen the review of commercial aviation safety. On Monday, a collision between two passenger trains left 95 people injured in the south of the Tunisian capital. According to civil defense spokesperson Mo Estria, the injured were taken to hospitals and there is no report of casualties, adding that only one of the train was carrying passengers. The incident happened at 9.30 a.m. local time in the Jebel Jalut area. Tunisia's aging railway system has seen several deadly crashes in recent years, likely to the lack of maintenance. At least five people were killed and more than 50 injured in late 2016 when a train slammed into a public bus before in the same area of the latest crash. In Egypt, the local currency falls almost 11 percent due to the conflict in Ukraine. On Monday, the Egyptian ground fell 10.67 percent following weeks of pressure on the currency as foreigners withdrew billions of U.S. dollars from Egypt's treasuries market in the aftermath of the conflict in Ukraine. Egypt is experiencing greater prices for its significant sweet import demands because Russia and Ukraine are its biggest wheat supplier, as well as a loss in tourism earnings from Russia and Ukrainian visitors to Red Sea resorts. Also, importers were unable to get the U.S. dollar required for letters of credit, causing products to be stranded in Egyptian ports. The country is in talks with the International Monetary Fund about possible assistance, according to sources close to the negotiations although no formal request was made. On Monday, Ghana's central bank announced 
a tightening of its monetary policy stance with a record hike in the policy rate to slow down inflation. The governor of the Bank of Ghana, Ernest Addison, announced an increase in the benchmark policy rate by 250 basis points to 17% to tame spiraling commodity prices on the local market and curb the rise in inflation. Addison said the policy would hold the rise in inflation rate, which surged to 15.7% in February. The governor attributed the elevated inflationary risk to the rising cost of food and petroleum products, part of which he blamed on the Donbass crisis. Local authorities declared that Kenyan economy will increase by 6% this year. This emerged from a consultative forum held on Monday between the National Development Implementation Coordination and Communications Committee and development partners on the government's priority programs. According to the NDICC, indicators point to a quick rebound of the economy from the COVID-19 impact with remarkable improvements in the services and industrial sector. The government targeted to vaccinate 26 million people to boost COVID-19 immunity and allow for more economic activities with increased interactions. Authorities will support labor-intensive projects such as Kasi Mentani, the construction of CBC classrooms and other infrastructural developments to provide the youth with job opportunities and create incomes for families. And in some supermarkets, the staples are unavailable. In Nairobi, Spain endorsed Morocco's expansion in its plan in Western Sahara after recognizing the autonomy plan. The Saharawis insist that the Spanish government yielded to the blackmail of the Alawi regime. The news is known after the two years of diplomatic crisis that closed the two Spanish borders with Morocco in Ceuta and Melilla. Our correspondent Sergio Rodrigo gives us the details. All right, during the Spanish government, President Pedro Sanchez recognized by letter the Morocco's expansionist plan and turns his back on international legality that recognizes the referendum of the Western Sahara. Spain considers that the autonomy initiative presented in 2007 is the most serious, realistic, and credible basis for the resolution of this dispute. The Saharawis, exiled in Algeria since 1975, consider that Spain has fallen into the webs of Moroccan blackmail and asked the administrative power not to abandon the Saharawis again and to return to international legality. We understand this the result of permanent insistent pressure from Morocco in recent months, and this has been a toll paid by the Spanish government to try to restore its relations with Morocco but from, from achieving stability and a solution to the Western Sahara conflict. What it caused is an escalation and increased tension in a vital area for Spain's strategic interest, such as Northern Africa. This is the border of Beni Ensor in Melilla, one of the busiest crossing points in Africa. For two years, both sides have been closer to the citizens, causing economic asphyxia between the parties and harming the citizens, and the stabilization strategy of the Moroccan government against Spain for, for two years now. The border is a mechanism that Morocco uses as immigration to put pressure on Sulta and Melilla. Just look at the historical date that have been happening and I'm going to refer to the Green March in 1975, since then has stopped. So Morocco uses that. These are the weapons of pressure. The Spanish government assures that recognizing the Moroccan plan in the occupied territories of Western Sahara will generate more stability in the respect of the sovereignty of Ceuta, Melilla, and in the migratory control. But even if the borders between Spain and Morocco reopen, the gap opens in Algeria, the main gas supply of, of the Spanish state. Sergio Rodrigo y Carlos Gil, Telesur, Melilla. Like this, we have come to the end of this news brief. Remember, you can find this and many other stories on our website at TelesurEnglish.net. You can also join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram. For Telesur English, I'm Luis Alberto Matos, and as always, thank you for watching.